Hello everybody, welcome back to Level 1 News. Today is December 10th, 2021. Start getting your Christmas presents if you have not already. Today we're doing security, robot, and nonsense. Look at somebody assuming everyone's a Christian. Mm. Well, happy holidays if you celebrate something else. <laughs> oh man. Something, I something Yarbuckle. I, I can't think of an intro for this because yeah. this is the most horrific, <laughs> terrifying reality. And I don't... It's the, this is it. It's going to happen. I have a different theory as to what this is. We're going to live through this, and it's going to be terrible. Qualcomm's new always-on smartphone camera is a potential privacy nightmare. So Qualcomm had their big event, their big tech event, which mostly did not have a lot of technical details, but one of them was that this camera in the phone is just going to be on all the time. So it's got context, and it knows what's going on around it, and blah, blah, blah. So they say, are you thinking, why? Why would you do that? Well, they're saying... Forget this, you know, using your thumb and unlocking your phone. Your phone is always going to be waiting to see if you're looking at it. So let's say you set your phone up on your desk and you're typing away, you're working, and you glance down at it. Your phone needs to know immediately. It's like, yes, I'm ready. Pick me up. <laughs> it's Love kind of me. pathetic, really. Yeah. You know? Why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> but in exchange for that feature, not only will we be burning constant electricity, which Greta would be furious about, <laughs> but your phone is looking at everything. And even if... Qualcomm or whoever doesn't do it, Apple is. Apple's going to use that. Yeah. Apple is going to use that for something. They're probably already doing it. I th my alternative is that I think Qualcomm's press release was so weak that they decided to do this as a way to get more people to talk about it because <laughs> some publicity is better than no publicity. Mm, that is a headline, <laughs> isn't it? They knew that this would be a headline. The Qualcomm presentation really just was not executed well. Which is sad, because I think Qualcomm has some good products. Do you think that Intel called them after and were like, we know what that's like, we've been through that? <laughs> it, the, honestly, the way the presentation went is like, Intel just wrote them a check for like a billion dollars to throw their own presentation. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hell of a business model. <laughs> uh, and this one's terrifying because, once again, you get... The, uh, if you're deciding what to use for security, this is the exact kind of story you need to read. Because I can tell you that uh, iMessage, Line, and WhatsApp don't use them. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, go for Signal, Telegram, Threema. I've never heard of Threema. Viber, WeChat, or Wick. Why? Uh, FBI document shows what data can be obtained from encrypted messaging apps. Now, it's funny that WeChat's on there because we know that the party can access a lot more information from WeChat than the FBI can. So you can go through here and you can see what your chosen app can, what the FBI can get from it. And you want to choose the one that's the smallest. Looks like Signal has the least number of rows. <laughs> so yeah, very interesting. Very interesting stuff what the FBI can do. Some of it's real time access too. It's like you just don't even have to bother. They're just like, ah, uh, it's too much headache dealing <laughs> with judges and warrants and stuff. Here's the terminal. Please be careful with your use of the terminal. <laughs> Please verbally <laughs> tell me that you're not going to use this for terrible purposes. It's just a click-through button like, I agree to abide <laughs> by the terms. Okay. I am 18 years old. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's a new kind of malware that's going out. And this is the same old get an SMS. There's a link in it. You should never click a link in an SMS for any reason, no matter who it's from. Thousands of AT&T customers in the U.S. are infected by new data-stealing malware. How, you think? Well, they get an SMS that says, you got a message. You really need to see this message. Click here to load the message. How did they get into those networks? Well, there was a specific device that had the old default account with a username and password that can't be changed. This has been a known issue since 2017. AT&T could not be bothered to fix it, despite taking all that federal money to upgrade their equipment. So there's how they get in. And yep, it was all this one piece of equipment. What was the Edge something Edge? Edge Mark Enterprise Session Border Controller. If you got one of those, I got bad news for you. They're already in. They looked at it. It was all AT&T and only from the United States. Wait, does AT&T operate anywhere else? Maybe that's why. Mm. They probably operate in Canada, right? A little bit, yeah. There's a new kind of malware in Finland. Guess how it gets into your phone? The exact same way that every other malware does. Don't click on links and messages. 
Finland warns of the Flubot malware heavily targeting Android users. Turns out there's some holes. It's weird that they would call it Flubot. Because the flu's been eradicated, right? <laughs> no one ever gets the flu anymore. Oh, no. This year's strain is influenza A. Again? Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> it's like a lottery. What one is it going to be this year? It's, it's A, I think, at least around here. And, well, you know what? I say they always get you with SMS, but that's not true at all. Sometimes they get you right from the App Store because there's nothing that you download from the App Store that's safe. And nope. there was a variety of stuff here. QR codes, fitness monitors, cryptocurrency apps, whatever you might want, except none of them were real. Over 300,000 Android users have downloaded these banking Trojan malware apps, say security researchers. What do they do? They steal your SMS message, uh, SMS message for two-factor, which could, if it's timed right, allow the attacker to access your bank account or whatever, even though you've got two-factor auth turned on. Well, we saw, remember the, the thing they did where they showcased how that works? where it fires off your two-factor, but then they're immediately monitoring it and grabbing it, so you never know. Or you think that it's real. And you're like, oh, I better give this number. No. Real dumb. You know what else is dumb? Signing a contract, contract, that you can't really read, but even if you could read it, you wouldn't be able to understand it. <laughs> really stupid smart contract bug let a hacker steal 31 million in digital coin. Ars Technica has got the scoop. So this is another one of those, you know, blockchain smart contract things. It did not go well. So this was a, it was two currencies and they were using one as a proxy for the other. But the thing they didn't secure inside the contract is that maliciously you could change the price of one inside the contract, which would then let you cash out for a price that's not real. It worked really well. $31 million worth. Bad news for those people. And we know that uh, China has amazing surveillance. It's incredible. And we know that they target certain groups and keep track of them. Really, really specific track of them. And now we know that within that subsystem, <laughs> they have more of a hierarchy. China's surveillance of journalists to use traffic light system. So you have green, yellow, red, and also loss of kidney. <laughs> Uyghur. Oh. Uyghur is the last one. Key concern. They have a flowchart here, which we can't read. But they point out how if a journalist is traveling into a place, I don't know what this has to do it with It was that. a flooding image from China earlier this year. It's what? not really related. Yeah. but uh, If you're a journalist and you're moving into a new province, or visiting or whatever and they catch you on the cameras then the cameras will flag you with a color and if you're red it will notify the local authorities that you're coming to town that's not creepy and chilling at all also don't you think most of the journalists are probably at least yellow yes i also feel like that has to be annoying if you're a local enforcement person where it's like you're trying to deal with like some sort of actual local crime and then you're constantly getting like pings on your phone it's like journalist entered the area <laughs> journalist entered the area journalist think, left the area Chris I don't think you understand their mindset their mindset yeah. is literally they're going to come and kill my family if I don't <laughs> if I don't track these people down yeah. that doesn't mean the app notifications aren't annoying <laughs> that was uh, you know like uh, I think Stalin <laughs> was famous for saying you will find me this number of dissidents this week. And if you don't, you and your family are the dissidents this week. So they're happy to get a journalist. It's like, oh, that's like a cop who needs to get their quota. And they're yeah. like, ooh, a speeder. Oh, we were talking yeah. about that the other day. Yeah. <laughs> are they going to have some guilty cash on them? <laughs> oh, <laughs> even better. Yeah. Now, I got to say, uh, I can't tell which one it is. Can you? Nope. Uh, no, no. It is. This is fantastic. Now, this is not functional, right? This is just a yeah. It's a prosthetic, just to look good. But right, it looks amazing. It does. British man given 3D printed eye in world first hospital says. So they used a 3D scanner to scan his eye socket and actually printed an eye that you can look inside. So usually they would like paint an iris and then sort of set that with epoxy or something in a in a glass eye but no this was 3d printed just for him uh, a family friend of ours has a glass eye and like hers looks pretty good and like pretty convincing until you look at it real closely his is fancy like i couldn't tell at all yeah they pointed out because those glass eyes are painted on the surface right whereas this is 
<laughs> Look at this dog's little little legs. Oh. <laughs> 3D printing. Woo. Unrelated to anything, that guy has a fantastic smile. <laughs> this is a the canine representation of uh, Jiffy after the demerge. <laughs> Except those paws are gone forever. <laughs> Well, Twitch is apparently still having a lot of trouble with organized raids. Maybe the, the bad kind. Maybe yeah, not the, fun raids. Maybe it's the same people who are looting. <laughs> but uh, what will happen is they'll come in and, you know, they've we've actually gotten, uh, you know, our, our channel is so, you know, like no one cares about our channel. But once in a while, we'll get like somebody who's doing the swastika script. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that they're doing here. They usually target... You know, certain people that they think will be very triggered by what they're doing. And Twitch is saying, no, we have a new robot to stop this. Twitch unleashes AI tool to spot banned users. So the AI tool is going to figure out if somebody's come back under a new nickname. Maybe it uses their IP address. I don't know. We're going to call it AI. So you get one of two classifications after this thing detects you. Either you are a likely offender or it's unsure. You're a possible offender. If you're a possible offender, you can still post, but your post will have a little message next time. It's like, well, we're not sure about this one. If it's likely, you cannot post. <laughs> be interested to see how accurate it actually is as it rolls out. You've been shadow banned. Now, i got to say, the word robot here, it seems a little misused. Yeah. yeah. I kind of read this and was like, I, I I mean, this is CNN, so... You know, there's no journalistic integrity here, but I this is this has got to be clickbait because it's not a robot. World's first living robots can now reproduce. Scientists say it's not really a robot so much as a lump of cells. So this lump of cells at some point becomes good enough to pick up other raw material. Well, what it, it makes little piles. <laughs> it looks of, like tendies and salt. <laughs> <laughs> it basically, is on a very small level, and it'll make a little pile of these these things over here. Oh, those are stem cells, I think. Yeah. And uh, if it piles them up enough, eventually they will merge together and become another one of these little... You know, Tendies. Peanut butter crunch nuggets or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not a robot. Well, it was... It's a genetic... It's a... It's a combination. It's more a biological robot than a mechanical robot. But yeah, it's, it, was, it was synthesized. So I, I don't know what to call it. I suppose this is it, like rolling the ball. Right? Yeah. It's making it a bigger, like making a snowman. It's nesting to prepare for new life. Do you think it gets any joy out of that process? <laughs> Does it have any memory or consciousness? Does it know who it is? Now I'm hungry. Does it contemplate I am? <laughs> I nudge stem cells into a pile, therefore I am. <laughs> that might be this week's title. Now, Krista, that. you are a mushroom enthusiast. Right. Would you replace your wardrobe with all mushrooms? Californian firm touts mushroom leather as sustainability game changer. There is an Hermes bag that has been made out of mushroom leather. It's no longer just a hypothetical. How much does that cost? Oh, I'm sure something <laughs> obscene because it's Hermes. I, I don't know. I don't know about the longevity of it yet. I would be interested to see how well it holds up. If it holds up well, I would absolutely use mushroom I mean, leather. this looks pretty good. It does. In terms of leather. Yeah. But how long would it last? Now, I'm afraid it would be... Because remember, some people were telling us about uh, how the rats eat car parts now because they're made out of corn. Mm. I'd be oh, afraid. Yeah. Like, if I, my car interior was mushroom leather, I don't think I would... <laughs> you wouldn't trust that. it. No. Is artificially grown cow leather vegan? If there was no cow and it was just cow skin grown in a vat... Is that vegan? No, I don't think so, because vegan can be for moral or health purposes, right? Well, how does... It's leather. It depend, yeah, it depends on the vegan, well, too, I'd imagine. Yeah, I guess if you're talking about leather. But, wait, does vegan... Does vegan count toward things we don't consume? Yes. Okay. Yeah, like, usually they'll avoid anything, any animal product. But it's not really an animal product. What if they walk through a spider web? <laughs> and they actually get... They <laughs> inhale some... Or, or they'd be wearing it, right? It's real imitation cow skin. I'm interested to see. I'll wear some some mushroom clothing. Yeah, I'd be I'd be willing to try it. It's not like I wear a lot of leather now, though. So. <laughs> well, I have like a pair of leather boots. That's what I'm curious about. Like, how will they hold up to rain and mud and dirt? And Carl, is that mushroom mushroom leather chaps? That looks amazing. <laughs> 
You know who would have, that fashion would have been great for? All the guys during the early age of sale who got scurvy and <laughs> starved. Oh, well, yeah, you could eat them. Just eat my chaps. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, we we got to have at least one uh, dystopian NFT story per week, right? <laughs> and this one definitely qualifies. Michael Cohen's prison badge will be sold as an NFT. <laughs> Simultaneously make a lot of money and get back in the news after he's off of uh, his supervised release. Or he's currently only being supervised release. He was under house arrest. So he's got a picture of him writing his book. He's got uh, some excerpts from the book. And he's got that badge. All will be NFT'd and auctioned off at some kind of insanely posh, high price get-together. Once again, another story about us weeping for the future of humanity. Something that tells me that Michael Cohen's prison badge NFT is along the same vein as Hunter Biden's artwork. <laughs> May actually be used as a vehicle by foreign governments for... Maybe. Maybe. Which is interesting because they are as politically opposite as you can get. And, and yet. yet. <laughs> Eventually, you know, that's, that just turns into a circle. It feels that way to be an ordinary citizen. <laughs> and I usually, so, believe it or not, I actually try to shy away from the most incendiary stories. <laughs> but I could not pass up this headline. <laughs> Suspect in deadly Waukesha. Waukesha. It's a word I've Waukesha. read but have not said Waukesha. out loud. Waukesha. Holiday parade crash says that he feels demonized. Mm. Bruh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I mean... He did act like a bit of a demon. A bit, yeah. I mean... Also, that whole interview, Fox News interviewed him. He never breached anything about why. He won't answer those questions. Hmm. I was just feeling bad that day. I mean, that could be the answer. Well, that's not a good answer. It's not a good answer. Also, I love these uh, Taliban, Taliban. What's the proper one? Is it Taliban? Every president has said it differently. I've never heard a native speaker say it. Anyway. We better not ask that because the algorithm will probably be like, why are they writing that in the comments? Oh, They've said it three times already. <laughs> we'll, we'll get comments in script and it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they are in power. And it seems like as a freshman ruler, they are doing some things very incorrectly. They are not able to solve some of the most basic problems. So what do you do? Well, you do what every American president has ever done, right? You blame the last guy. Previous government is responsible for the food crisis, according to the current people in charge in Afghanistan. Uh, Man, I'm, I'm struggling not to get on this Britney Spears clickbait over here. Uh, <laughs> What's happening with her conservatorship? I think she's free, right? I think she's free. Yeah, she's free. Well, you know, one of the memes I think is way overused and is not funny at all anymore is like the whole kill it with fire thing, whenever <laughs> there's a spider or something terrible. But this man took it seriously <laughs> and disaster. Maryland homeowner burned down his house trying to fight snakes. And As oh boy, do. there's a lot of pictures. And I feel really, really bad for him because his homeowner's insurance isn't going to cover squat. This no. house looks like a little bit of a McMansion too. Like it's huge. Yeah. And look how many car spots there are. Not only is it no huge, landscaping. Not only is it huge, Krista, but also filled with snakes. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to use coal smoke. And he put it in the basement. To smoke out the snakes. There's got to be Gotta be a better way. A way better solution for that. Do you think he like called the pest control people and they were like, Oh, it's gonna be expensive and he's like, I'll just do it myself. But also if your house has become infested with snakes there's enough of something else that the snakes are feeding on <laughs> yeah, to support an infestation of snakes. And it'd probably be easier to get rid of the food source. It perhaps suggests other problems. Ryan, didn't you say your parents there was a snake that like lived under the siding? Yeah, well, we were cleaning the side of the house one time, and there was a lump. And we were like, what is this lump under the siding? And I had a rubber mallet, and I just banged on it, and... Out flopped. I think this is the middle of the winter too. Yeah. So the snake just like was just laying there. You know? like it couldn't do anything. So we picked it up and threw it in the creek. I think about that story all the time. I'm like, what if there's a snake just living in my siding? But uh, you know, I mean, the sun would hit that siding. I bet that was fantastic. Probably snake nice and living. warm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great. 
pro tip if you're a snake looking for someplace to sleep, get up under some vinyl siding. <laughs> <clears throat> the YouTube content ID we know is abused. It may be one of the most abused systems in the world of technology. Yeah. I mean, it is just astonishing how often they will get away with claiming something that doesn't belong to them. And when I say they, I mean the big copyright holders. Because it turns out that when somebody else does it, they don't get to get away with it the same way. False positives do matter if you don't line everybody's pockets. (laughs) The U.S. has indicted two men for running a $20 million YouTube content ID scam. Two men have been indicted for claiming the rights to 50,000 tracks and then illegally monetizing users' uploads over the period of four years. Meanwhile, when, you know, the RIAA does this, or Sony, with, like, the happy birthday song, nothing happens. So if you're going to pull off something like this, um, I would recommend not making this your social media profile. Was that a Lambo back there? (laughs) (laughs) I want to fly under the radar. Maybe that's not the way to do it. Yeah. And I probably would have stopped. Honestly, I probably would have stopped at 10 million. <laughs> and I probably would have left the country. <laughs> Just get away. So, they will be going away for quite some time. Now this this is astonishing. I love this story. Really it is like it's it's fascinating. I, right now, I'm sure my neighbors are furious with me because I'm <laughs> I'm doing nothing about my pine needles. <laughs> Oh, you have that one neighbor who's like a real weird about yeah, his lawn. And, and those and those trees bump up against his property, and like his line is perfect. <laughs> and mine like, is just all over the yard. Uh, he's like, no, this is what you need to. That's good compost. It's good. It's like, good bro, for the soil. Bro, the wind is going to blow eventually. <laughs> Why? Oh, Why that's probably going to be driving him insane. Is like the wind is blowing on his property, and he's like, already cleaned. Uh. Listen, he'll be dead soon. <laughs> but. uh I guess you could be a little bit more upset about this. Now, they did bring up that one family was thinking about moving because of this, and they're like, but we can't show the house. Because this, because this is here. And there is an explanation, but it's bizarre. Did you understand I, I exactly? Get it. Yeah, I don't yeah. understand the exact no. business model, though. A sea of packages. Tennessee residents worried about neighbors' overflowing deliveries. So uh, Amazon has this thing where if you use Amazon for drop shipping and you don't sell enough product, they'll either destroy it or you can elect to have it shipped back to you. So I think these people are are have some kind of a business where they get stuff from China or they get stuff from somewhere else and they have uh, it on Amazon. See, this article made it sound like it was just the boxes. No, there's stuff in no, them. No, there's oh, stuff okay. in them, Okay, well, yeah. that makes a lot more sense. Well, and then p- people in the comments mentioned that, like, we know there's stuff in them, but, like, they just leave them out in the rain. You should scroll down and enlarge that tweet at the very bottom. Because look at this photo. They're well. They're they probably what they're doing is you know they figure out pretty quickly if there's anything in there that they care about. Yeah. That's insane. Look how many bo- like the half the yard is boxes. That grass. Actually, you can see how dead that grass is. You see over it's, here. Cardboard's <laughs> excellent at killing grass. I use that to like put underneath mulch in my yard. Also, what who you think's complaining? This house. Look at these leaves. <laughs> Come on. I feel like that's not even the weirdest thing I've seen. All the house needs is just a couple tarps or a carport to cover that temporarily. It'll be fine. Well, it won't be fine because they did follow up and uh, someone from the county had gone out and written them. They were outside the city limits, and this is the beauty of living outside the city limits. They were like, what about code enforcement? And code enforcement was like, we don't. (laughs) This is outside the city. These are actual, like, sovereign citizens who have their own (laughs) rights. They don't live in a horrible dystopian city. We can't do anything to them. Or an HOA. Actually, give us a week. We'll figure it out. And they did. I think the county is only citing them because it might be a little bit of a fire hazard. Because if somebody you know tosses a cigarette from a moving car into their yard, it could be very bad. <laughs> yeah. There could also be some stuff in those boxes, like a lithium battery or something. Yeah. And it gets rained on. Yeah. That'd be bad. There's a lot of problems that could... I mean, I'm not saying I'd be happy about it. Certainly. Also, the other big issue, and imagine how annoying this is. Because... This house gets maybe 100 packages a day. The delivery drivers deliver everybody else's stuff there at the same time. Accidentally. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. People say they have to like go over and root through the packages to find theirs. That would, that would upset me. Yeah. I've had to do that a couple of times. I've had to do that where an Amazon driver misdelivered a block away. And he's like, you, you marked the package as not delivered and I brought it. And I was like, no, you didn't. And he's like... 
maybe it was down at the down like a block away. And I was like, well, I already reported it. And he's like, did you go down there? I was like, no, you're just telling me. <laughs> you're just, also, just a block away, like not what house, just somewhere down there. Yeah. Listen, when I left this morning, I forgot that one at the distribution center. Did you go there? Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's there. I mean, I, I did go down there, and I did get it back, you know, like two or three weeks later. And he's like, did you get your package? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, okay, well, you know, let him know. And, it's just like, <laughs> and then he just slowly walks away. You should not have let them know. Yeah. Well, I did, but Amazon said to keep it. It's fine. I didn't care. Oh, you got it for free? Mm-hmm. Well, that's actually a little bit of a bonus, isn't it? Yeah. Amazon. Ooh. And, and I was like, it was, uh, you know, it was misdelivered here, and they're like, okay, we updated the file. I haven't seen that guy anymore. How many meth heads would we need to cycle through <laughs> to defraud Amazon out of tens of thousands of dollars of deliveries like this? I think they're already working through that algorithm, and there's not enough people they can employ to do that. <laughs> Because if we gave a meth head five hundred dollars, let's give him a grand. Yeah, oh. we, we run them for a week. And the the misdelivered package had been opened and rifled through, so I feel like if it had been, you know, like gold, that, that's who they delivered it to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you knew that. I don't know how to introduce this one. This is terrible. <laughs> this was sad. What I will sad say, end on? like this and the written house thing. Well, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but it, the problem we have in this country is not you know systemic racism or climate change it's stupidity and both of those cases were very stupid people using very dangerous things and that's what we have to fix webcam model accidentally shoots herself in the vajayj with the nine millimeter handgun during video shoot (laughs) all right here she is oh i didn't see the pictures on this article i hope she's okay they did say that it was non-trivial, but that she's going to be okay. Well, that's good. But her job is this. She mm-hmm. was doing a live show as she was doing this. So Ugh. what? It's the, there's going to be differences, right? Handgun safety. The next time you look at that area, it might mm-hmm. not be as presentable. Mm-hmm. So does she have a career going forward? Mm-hmm. Or is that a, a fun niche? Is that like a... Uh, you know a, a fetish of some kind uh. well, apparently she had roommates so like her roommates heard it go off yeah it was funny because they described the scene they said you know it's like gunshot roommate runs in like what's going on and her first response was I'm so sorry <laughs> which I guess you should apologize for that yeah. that's really stupid people got to see it live though oh. Ooh. yeah on a a website whose name I won't say. It starts with chat. I guess that, uh, you know, she was ready in case of, there was a burglar or something. If you were a stalker, you'd probably think twice. If I walked in on that? <laughs> no, yeah. no, I mean that, you know, that this happened. The chances of future stalking is probably dramatically <laughs> oh, lower. Right. I, well, you're, you're going to be turned off by the fact that you could get shot, but also now the physical damage. I wasn't even thinking about that, but yeah, I guess. Oh, listen, that's used goods at this point. That is a seller's or a buyer's market, that whole thing. You just move on to the next one. <sighs> they're always making more. Happy Friday, everybody. <laughs> oh, we should also mention, uh, we were thinking maybe we start doing one live show a week. What would you guys, or a month? A month. Not a week, a yeah. Month. What would you guys think about that? Woo, engagement challenge, let us know. It means we'd probably, would we do it on Mondays? Probably a Monday. And then that the other videos that week are things like, you know, the tree nest video and some of the other stuff that we did, which seemed to actually go well. The numbers were better than usual. Although, it does create. The weird time, like this week, we only had four days of stories instead of our usual, like, full seven. One week a month. We'll have Monday and Friday yeah. afternoon burned. Oh, yeah. That could be a problem, depending on the state of certain projects. Yeah. I don't know. We're thinking about it. Let us know what you think. Yeah. We will see you guys later. Go do November stuff. Bye.